Welcome. Today's uh, lesson is going to be on how to analyze a breeding bunny lab that we did uh, just a couple of days ago. So uh, if you go to your Google Classroom, go underneath, click on the uh, Google Sheets um, project, and then this will launch. It'll look just like this. And you'll notice Generation 1, all of Generation 10, we'll be looking at the big F allele and the little F allele. And uh, what happens between the two of them uh, when you have hairless, the little F, and also the big F, which is the furred uh, rabbits. So anyway, uh, what we're going to first of all do, we're going to calculate the average on each of the columns. We have a little bit, bit over 400 and some odd uh, pieces of data. It'd be a lot easier if we could just use um, Google Sheets to be able to do that. So to do this, what you need to do is you need to click on uh, cell number 2A, and you just go ahead and drag your mouse down and then I want you to go just beneath the last number in that column and let go you've highlighted all of this right here and now what you're going to do is you want to basically average it if you go to the epsilon right here the functions key and you click on the little error all you have to do is hit average and then at the very bottom right here this right here will be uh, the average now what I would like also you to do, I'd like you to label it because when we make our graph, each column or each bar on the graph is going to indicate a generation and an allele. So what I would like for you to do is um, go ahead and press G for generation, 1, and then it is, are we calculating the big F or the little f? In this case, it's the big F. So generation 1 and, of course, the capital F allele. Now let me go ahead and do it one more time. What you're going to do for this generation little f, generation one little f, we're going to click on the first letter and then we bring it down and we go past just one, uh, the last number in the column, go over to the functions key and click on average. And now what it does, it average for you that particular column. Now what I want you to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause it right now and um, go ahead and finish all of those on your own. If you, if you need help you can go back and, and watch what I did. So go ahead and finish generation 2 to generation 10. All right I think I've given enough time. You should be done at this particular point and what you should have is a line right to uh, actually uh, two rows on the bottom one labeled with uh, each generation and what allele that you're tracking and then the averages of each of the columns and each of the the generations so now let's just take, take a quick look at what we've got on g1 that's generation one and big f and little f you have a frequency rate of about 50 50 and over time goes on you should begin to see a pattern where big F starts to enlarge in frequency in other words it goes from 50 to maybe 60 70 80 percent of the time you'll have that big F allele whereas in the little f uh, or the hairless trait you'll see that starts to diminish over time it's not as frequently seen in the gene pool so make sure you make those observations now let's go ahead and make a graph I'm going to shrink the screen a little bit so it makes some room for my uh, graph a little bit. There we go. Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab or, or click on cell number A of, or 40A. And then what you're going to do is drag it to 41A and then just highlight all those uh, horizontally until you end up G10 a little f so you should have that all selected once you have that selected then what you're going to do is you're going to go right up here to insert everybody see that i'll enlarge that for you on uh, on your screen so that's going to be enlarged it says insert and then you go down to chart and i'll highlight that as well when you go to chart you're going to have some choices to make when click it once and then we want to basically we want a bar graph this first one right here and you'll notice that it's all uh, labeled with uh, like uh, G1, G2, etc. And then the smaller ones, as you can see with the little pointer, uh, they're the little f allele. So I'm going to, that's good enough for me. So we're going to click on insert and it's going to place itself somewhere. And I've got to go find it. There it is. And I'd like for you to just click that 
drag it over here next to the question. Now these two steps were just steps. Um, for instance, calculate the average of each column. We did that. And then when you have all the averages, make a bar graph. We just did that. Now I'm going to just give you a couple of quick hints on how to answer that question. Now that you got the graph, you're going to be analyzing that. Now what's a great thing about this, it is a um, it's a live graph, so you can click on these bars to see the averages, and you can see uh, what allele we're talking about, etc. So I hope that you'll include that in the in the answers down below. But when you're, it, it says, what does this data say about frequency of the F allele and the little F allele, the big F and the little F allele? And I'm hoping you're going to say one grows and one shrinks. I hope you're going to say a little bit more than that. And I would use um, the uh, five fingers of evolution to help guide your answer so you'll talk about natural selection what happened in that population now uh, and then of course where's the gene flow going to be from what trait to what trait do you think may be favored and in the middle uh, on the middle finger remember we talked about the m for mutation which one of those alleles uh, could be kind of considered as a mutation and then, of course, the ring finger, there was non-random mating. There must have been something in the population, right, that that caused certain animals to mate with certain animals. And then lastly, what happened to the population side? What's happening to the frequency? Is our gene pool getting larger and more diverse, or is it getting smaller and less diverse? So answer those questions as you take a look at it. I hope this has helped you. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me or on the TAs. And we'll see you in the lab soon. Thanks.